Original Nintendo branded N64 controllers are notorious for uh, floppy stick syndrome. Now, in a previous video, we went over what to do in this situation, and usually the answer is get a new controller. But what if this controller is your childhood N64 controller? If there's so much nostalgia and sentimental value packed into this little thing that you just can't bear the thought of parting with it. Well, then this is a video for you. This is the Nostalgic Video Games Tech Room. This is that little shack over in the corner of our store here in Florence, Kentucky. This is where the magic happens. And by magic, I mean battery replacements, low level tech repair, everything that really needs to be ripped apart and fixed gets sent off to our tech guy off site. But this is our home base right here. Unfortunately, floppy stick syndrome is a side effect of a flaw in Nintendo's original design. So I'm gonna crack this bad boy open, show you what's wrong with it and how to fix it. There are tons of home remedies to try and fix those sticks, but really, I've tried them all. I personally had a handful of different N64 controllers in my collection that just weren't playable anymore because of how floppy they are. Usually that's a sign that whoever owned this controller owned Mario Party and, and break their controllers. All right, so here we are at the bench with our busted old controller. So the first thing you're gonna need is a Phillips head screwdriver. So at this point, Nintendo had sort of foregone the security bits on their uh, actual controllers. And you'll just need, you know, a pretty small one. And then there are a handful of different screws here that you gotta undo. There's, now there's two on each of the side arms, one on the main arm, making five. And then there's two on the body, making seven but there are also two in here in the memory card slot. So that makes nine screws that you have to undo here. Now the ones in the memory card slot are a little bit smaller, but you should be able to get it out with the same screwdriver. Um, these ones look real rusted and nasty, but uh, I'm gonna do my best to get them out of here. Alrighty, let's see here. Aha! As easy as that. Now, I try to keep the screws in there just so I don't lose the spot, uh, you know, where that screw actually went. Um, but, I mean, if you got a little magnetic dish, you know, you do you, homeboy. Everyone does tech differently. In here, we get to see all the innards of the controller. Now, most of the actual motherboard bits are on the other side here. But right here is the controller module. Now, this has three screws that we have to undo to get it off. But first things first, we have to take the Z button off of this little uh, segment here. So we just kind of want to carefully pull back these tabs, just sort of slide it out of there. And you can just, yeah, it's on this sort of like stiff, uh, twisty tie like wire that you can just sort of push out of the way here. Now, You've got clear access here to this control module. Now that cable coming out plugs into the motherboard here. So we do want to just gently pull that out. My nails aren't strong enough, which means a little flathead screwdriver to the rescue. So we just kind of gently pop that out. Oh, well, there goes the shoulder button. Be careful not to lose the shoulder buttons because they are just sort of sitting in there on these little hinges. Um, super easy to put back in, but you know, you can knock them out real easy. But there we go, unplugged from the motherboard. So now all we gotta do is unscrew these three screws here. And they're the same size, same Phillips head as uh, screws that were screwed in the memory card slot there. Alrighty. And there you go. Slides right on out of there. Oh, well, there goes the Z button membrane. If that falls off, it just sort of sits gently right there. There's like a little, there's these two little nubs on the back side of the membrane that kind of plug into these two holes here on the Z button. And it's the same shape as the board, so it's easy to plug right back up in there. Now you do want to keep these screws because none of these replacement sticks come with any hardware. So these tiny little baby screws, you're gonna wanna get out of there. So I'm actually gonna crack this open and show you guys the reason that these wear out so easily. Now this was Nintendo's first shot at an analog stick if you don't count the NES Max controller, which, um, yeah, I don't know what the hell they were thinking there. So Nintendo was still kind of figuring out uh, 
how to make uh, an analog stick. And their uh, design choice here was pretty, um, pretty interesting here. So when you crack these open, you gotta kind of pull it up and off of these prongs here. Just kind of pop off like that. <laughs> And then you can just pull this right up there. All right, so there is the inner workings of the N64 analog stick. So here we have the actual stick. Um, it's falling through here because I've opened it and released the tension. Now we've got this kind of guide here that the stick sits in. It's got this little sort of toothed gear. And that sort of sits into here, pressing the gear here. And there's another one of those guides facing the other direction in this little dish here. So this dish is the main issue here. So I'm gonna take out this little guide to show you a little better. Look how nasty that is. Now the flaw in this design is that this stick goes down through these guides and sits into this dish. And the end of this stick is just like a little nub and that nub along with the, the guidance of those guides that help spring it back into the main center, uh, rubs along this dish here. And over time, this dish wears out. And I don't know if you can see on the camera here, but sort of along a lot of this, you can see sort of a fine white powder. And no, Wario is not smuggling Colombian Bam Bam in your N64 controller that is worn out plastic from this dish. So the main issue here is that you are actually losing material from it being worn out. There's tons of hell remedies, like filling that little dish with some super glue, putting a little bit of paper or something on the, on the end of the stick to sort of give it a little more mass there to fill the space that's been scored out, but uh, none of it works, trust me. I tried both of those. I also tried heating up those little guard rails and squeezing them a little tighter and uh, I ended up just melting the Bruh. inner components of my controller and having to do what I do in this video anyways. So what you need, right here. This is the old school sharpshooter stick. This is just a 1-1 replacement of the original Nintendo joysticks. This is it straight out of the box. It's just a little joystick module and it's got the exact same design as the original Nintendo controllers. It's got the same feel. It's really a, a, a really good clone replacement. If you want that classic feel and that original design, this is what's for you. But there's also a few other options, like this bad boy right here. This is the Retrobit Analog Stick Repair Module. Now we actually sell these in store at Nostalgic, and these, they're a little bit different. So this functionally is the same thing. It's that same module with the same little cable here. But instead of that original style weird stick with the ball, you actually have a GameCube style analog stick. Now this is what I personally use. Yes, these old school sharpshooter sticks are the same feel, classic design. It's gonna be the closest to repairing, you know, with an original joystick as you can get with a new product that isn't worn out. But these are gonna last you. Personally, me, I just prefer the GameCube style analog stick. I think it feels better, I think it looks better, but in the end, it is personal preference. Now, whichever one of these sticks you choose, it's the exact same repair process. The, besides the actual joystick, they got the same spots for screws, they got the same cables, everything goes in exactly the same. So I'll stop yammering and show you how it's done. Now from here on out, we just do everything I just did in reverse. Now here's the old school sharpshooter stick, classic style. Um, I'm just gonna replace this because this one's probably gonna go out for sale after I clean it up and everything. Um, and you know, I try to keep everything as OEM as possible. But like I said, it's the exact same process with this one. So, we just want to place this bad boy back in here, just like the original was. And the first thing I like to do is screw this back in because it starts to become frustrating to fight it if you don't do that first. All right, now that that bad boy is screwed in, we just want to take this cable and you just kind of got to bend it around this way and you want to make sure that uh, these teeth are kind of facing downwards here. You've just got flat blue plastic facing up and that is what plugs into this slot right here. Nice. You just tell that you make that connection. It's pretty, pretty easy. It doesn't fight you too much. 
Uh, and then you just want to take this Z button and gently place it back into little grippers here. Now, it can be kind of hard to finagle the, the board and the membrane in there. You just kind of got to fiddle with it a bit. There we go. Boom, boom, boom. And there we go. Sticks replaced. Now, all we got to do is put this back on, screw this bad boy back up. But first, I'm going to clean this. Good old papy towel in your Windex multi-surface. Now, whenever I clean stuff here, I pretty much always start with the Windex because it's a bit more gentle than, you know, your 91% isopropyl alcohol, which we have like 400 million bottles lying around for cleaning cartridges and stuff. Uh, but I always like to do, oops, I always like to do Windex first just because, like I said, it's more gentle. Over the years, just like along this edge here, we'll just accumulate dirt and Cheeto dust and, you know, whatever the 12 year old playing with this was eating at the time. So to go along the edge here, well, there's a lot right here on this cable. And this all just looks like dirt and stuff. So I'm not even really gonna bother with the alcohol. Cause in my experience, sometimes, uh, especially if plastic is a bit more worn, um, alcohol or especially uh, like magic erasers and stuff, will just like actually, you know, sort of damage the plastic a little bit. It'll sort of wear it down and like make it shinier. I guess not damage, I guess it's just polishing it, but, uh, yeah, um, most of these, you know, OEM Nintendo accessories, cartridges and stuff have a little bit of a texture, and if you use that, you know, first off, you'll rub that texture right off. Shoulder buttons are a little nasty. Cool thing about these coming out so easily is that they're pretty easy to clean. Oop, not the membrane. I'm saving the membrane. Inside of the brain. Copyright strike. Nostalgic video games sued for a billion majillion dollars. And if you're cleaning, you screw up these shoulder membranes. It's the same as the Z button. They've got like little pegs that just pop back into the, the board there. And you just slide it back down into its little assembly. All right. Now all there's left to do. Screw this puppy back on. And remember, nine screws as well as the little ones in here, which are super easy to miss. Now with there being nine screws, it can be a bit frustrating trying to get everything lined up here. But with some patience, you'll get there. And just like that, you now have a functioning N64 controller. If this video helped you out, let me know by liking, commenting, letting me know. Uh, I always love hearing you guys' memories and experiences. Sorry for the little bit of drought of content here. We were a man down going into the holidays here at Nostalgic, so I was, uh, given 110% in the store. And man, you guys really turned out for Christmas. You guys made this holiday season a fantastic season for us here at Nostalgic. And uh, man, we're working hard getting games back on the shelf for you guys. I don't believe we have any of these sharpshooter style uh, joysticks on our online store, but we do have these retro bit analog sticks. So if you need one of these, just go to nostalgicvideogames.com where we have all of our uh, retro modern video games, consoles, accessories online, as well as a good deal of collectibles. You can order for free in-store pickup or have it shipped to you and buy with confidence that you're buying from a locally owned business. Thanks for tuning in to Nostalgic Video Games. I'll see you next time.